This is a big Vizio TV. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here and I'm checking out this. This is the Vizio M series MQ7 Quantum 70 inch 4K Smart TV. Now, the most important word in that was MQ7. Vizio has a number of Q series in the M series television line and the Q7 gives you quantum color with 30 dimming zones. That means you get a lot more color contrast. One of the challenges that a lot of these television companies have is can they give you true black? So is this black or is this a dark gray? Or maybe we can look up here better, right? And when I look at it, it's not the same color as if I turn the television off, but it's pretty darn close. And that big, deep, rich color palette gives you much better picture. Now, there are trade-offs because on any television line, you can spend five, ten thousand dollars and get the very latest and greatest, but most people honestly can't tell the difference. So I don't recommend going to the bottom end of the line and getting a $300 TV that happens to be the screen size you want because you are going to miss out on a lot of tech. But getting something that's right there at the sort of high end, around $1,000, which is what this is, is a pretty nice deal for a pretty sweet looking television. Now, this features Ultra HD 3840 by 2160 at 120 hertz with Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus. Both of those are the latest and greatest in sort of color technologies that give you the best picture you can. Um, Built-in Bluetooth, it also has two 10-watt speakers, although really there are no TVs on the market that I've seen that have really good built-in speakers, so it's always a good idea to upgrade with a soundbar. Vizio makes some great soundbars that pair really well with this, and you can just lay it all on, along the front here. You can actually raise these legs up just a little bit so the soundbar fits, and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, I know some people with soundbars are like, oh, I have to have speakers everywhere, I need a subwoofer. There are really nice self-contained little soundbars now that have no additional speakers and still hugely improve the sound of your TV. I can't even tell you just how much it is. You'd really have to experience it yourself. It's like going from AM radio to FM HD radio. So I don't know, you might not even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, in terms of input plugs, it has four HDMI plugs on the side. They're all HDMI 2.1, which gives you up to 4K at 50 hertz. And I actually have an Apple TV plugged in here. You can see that. And I'll show you all of this, give you some demo in just a second. One of the other cool things that this Vizio has is it has what they call their Pro Gaming Engine. And that gives you incredibly little lag or latency. In fact, they say that it's less than 10 milliseconds of lag at 60 hertz when you're looking at something in the center of the screen. That is super fast. That's where you're really hitting the edges of how fast your computer or video game system can process. Now, I am right here on their home screen, but let's go to watch free. And it does come with a remote and you can actually uh, get the SmartCast app and drop it on your Android or your um, Apple iPhone. Let me mute this. And so the great thing about these modern TVs is they come with a lot of built-in smarts. It's not just a blank screen until you plug something in. So when I went back to that home screen, you can see that this gives us the ability to choose from a lot of different channels. It gives us a quick access to a lot of the apps that we might want to use. And then they have Watch Free, which is Vizio's own programming system. So you can again get to a lot of content without paying another nickel. All you need is good internet connectivity and you're ready to rock and roll. Now here, if I go to the top, let's go all the way up to the top and I can choose Kids and Family, Watch Free, movies, shows, apps. There's a lot of things I can do. So if we go to kids and family, then it's a whole nother set of programming. And again, all of this for the most part is free. Now, if you drop into something like Netflix, then you need a Netflix subscription. But speaking of Netflix, this has shortcut buttons on the remote. So let's just push Netflix. 
and it will take me straight to my Netflix. It's actually running on the TV waiting for me to have input. And if I decide, eh, today I think I shall look at Amazon Video Prime, I can just push a button on the remote. There's nothing else plugged in. There's no other devices. I don't have to buy anything else. And now here I am and I can choose my profile. And just a moment or two. Some of these are much faster than others. I'm right here on Amazon Prime Video and you can see on my continue watching the kind of stuff that I watch. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. And Peacock has migrated onto this too. So now there's a button on the remote for Peacock. And then the buttons on the bottom are for Disney Plus and Crackle and Tubi. But again, all of this makes it super easy to work with this television. And on any of these, I can simply choose something and we can go back to this soccer match I've been watching. And I'm gonna switch remote controls here because we need to make sure that Apple TV is on. There we go. And you can see possibly it's a brighter and crisper screen. That's why I suddenly get went way dark. I'm, my, my face can't compete with that level of brightness, but you can still see me and you can see that it is hopefully pretty easy for me to move around. It's not sure why it's not, there we go. So now obviously I can go to Netflix through the Apple TV but I also can just, you know, sort of navigate with whatever input device I'm using. And this is a 4K connection to the TV from the Apple TV. But this is a little overwhelming. So I'm just going to go back to the Vizio TV programming and <laughs> I reappear. It's like some sort of haunted house trick, right? And so from here, I also wanted to show you the on-screen menus and programming. And let me tell you that in terms of inputs and outputs, the TV has uh, Ethernet and USB and an RF tuner. Yes, it has a built-in TV tuner. I'm not sure in what situations you could still use that nowadays as we've gone digital. But in output-wise, it has analog audio out. It has HDMI ARC and it also has digital audio out using something called SPDIF, which is the Sony Philips Digital Interconnected Format, which gives you compressed 5.1, 7.1 surround DTS. So we have Dolby Vision, we have HDR10+, we have DTS, we have surround. This TV really kind of checks off all the boxes. It is big. It is 69.5 inches diagonal. I guess they're allowed to sneak in that half an inch and say it's 70 inches, which makes it 61 by 35 by 2.9 inches thick. It is remarkably thin, easy to mount on a wall, and it's 55 pounds, so you want a really good wall mount, but it's a 400 millimeter by 200 millimeter wall mount standard system, so it's really easy to find one of those mounts. Uh, this is going to ultimately end up on my wall. I've just been waiting to do this review, which is easier to do here than once it's stuck on my wall. Anyway, let's go to that menu, and for this, I just choose the menu button, and now you can see some of the options here. I can choose picture mode, and there's all sorts of smarts like ambient light sensor so the tv could actually go a little dimmer when it's a dark room and when it's really bright out and you have sun flooding in from all the windows then it can actually automatically be brighter on the screen uh, if we go back to audio you can see that there's um, the ability to turn on, I have Virtual X surround sound enabled. You can do volume leveling. One of the things I really like is down here, Dialogue Enhancer. That is a godsend if you're sick of watching movies or TV where you can't hear the dialogue, but the background music and the sound effects are super loud. This can help modify that. That's a huge win. And you can get to your wireless network. You can see there's some accessibility features you can turn on. There's a lot going on here and you even have, and I think this is hilarious, it takes a couple of seconds to load, but you can get to your user manual for your TV on your TV, which actually makes sense, right? But having said all of that, let's just jump back to where we were. And this is the default home screen. And I just want to talk a little bit about the price before we wrap this up. Um, so 
I really like Vizio. I've had Vizio TVs for over a decade now, and I think we have four in my house. A lot of them we use as studio monitors, and they all work really well. One of the things I really like about this is on my older ones, if you were to push something like the Netflix button on the remote, it could take 10 to 30 seconds to actually be watching Netflix. They're just older systems with older processors. And this one, as you saw, it's pretty lightning fast. I mean, I pushed that button and within a second or two, I was on Netflix able to choose my programming and that's great. But more importantly, I think what's really great about these smart TVs is that they're becoming less sort of um, requiring external devices to be plugged in. So I have this Apple TV, I don't really need it, right? Because the Vizio has built in all of these different apps. So if I want to get to Apple TV and Disney and Netflix and Prime, I can do all that built into the television, which saves me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Do you have DVDs? Now well, you'll need to plug that in. Do you have a cable TV network? You'll probably have to plug that in too. But for the most part, if you're on the internet, this TV has access to a ton of content and it all looks really good. So I will say that I'm really impressed by this screen. It's really bright and vivid and fast. And so when you're watching like uh, race cars zooming around a track, there's no artifacting, there's no ghosting, nothing like that. It's just really crisp. And when we plugged in a PS4, it looked pretty sweet. I would love to be able to plug in a PS5. We don't have a PS5. <laughs> Maybe you do. But all of these things work really well and the entire M series has built in Chromecast and Apple AirPlay. So it's really great. I can sit on my computer and just send video to this TV and it automatically all syncs up, the sound works and everything. And so there I am on my computer and I have a nice big 4K being broadcast right here on the screen with no wires. How sweet is that, right? So. Lots to like about this, definitely worth checking out. Vizio, if you're looking for this, the M series is the one I like, this is what this is. Look for the MQ7 or the MQ8. The MQ6 is less expensive, but you might find that those extra dimming zones give you a more vibrant picture, particularly with complex video content. So, all that's left to talk about is the price, but before we get to the price, I'm gonna ask if you could subscribe to my channel. I put a ton of effort into my video reviews and I really appreciate when you subscribe so you can catch all of them. And of course, give me some feedback. What else do you wish I would have demoed or what do you really appreciate that I demoed in this particular video? Okay, this is the Vizio M-Series MQ7 Quantum 70-inch 4K Smart TV. It's a long name <laughs> and it's a thousand and ninety nine discounted right now on the Vizio.com website to nine ninety nine ninety nine at Vizio.com. You can definitely pick up Vizio TVs in a lot of different places, a lot of different retail outlets. Look closely at the model numbers to make sure you're getting that MQ7, not the MQ6, or you'll say, ooh, look, I found it even $200 cheaper. And that's because it's not this TV. So. Also comes in a lot of different sizes. This 70 inch is pretty daunting. This is a pretty big TV. <laughs> but if you have the room for it, this is gonna be glorious. So that's all I got. I think I need to go jump back onto Netflix and keep watching Squid Game. So I'll catch you in my next video.